Hello everybody, this is Luke, and welcome to Gaming Instincts TV. Today we're bringing you a video about our most anticipated monsters from Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World is a brand new game that introduces several new elements to the Monster Hunter series. One of the best changes being that it will be an open world where monsters live, breathe, hunt, and eat in their respective geographical locations. Monster Hunter maps will no longer be sectioned off by loading screens in this latest entry, making immersion of tracking and hunting a monster more real and exhilarating. It's been a long time since the series has had a proper console release after Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the Wii U, or Monster Hunter Online for PC that was only available for Japanese players. This new game in the series couldn't have come at a better time, when both the Xbox One and PS4 are both outselling their predecessors. This will give new players the best chance and opportunity to dive into this beloved series. This game is more relevant than ever in a world that's trying to jam loot boxes as an additional revenue source in many AAA titles. Monster Hunter World's director has gone on record saying the loot box business model does not apply to every title. This new addition to the series is shaping up to be one of the best releases of 2018, and it looks amazing. The series has always worked best as a handheld in order to meet and play with friends, so seeing the jump in graphics fidelity on consoles will certainly add that wow factor that will make this game pop. Monster Hunter games are great for practicing how to deal with gameplay mechanics and defeating bosses. Each monster is built from the ground up with their own motifs, attacks, styles, and design. Learning how to hunt monsters, attack, and plan can help players learn patience and tactics when dealing with skill-based combat. So, let's talk about our most anticipated new monsters that are being introduced in Monster Hunter World. The Ancient Forest is one of the brand new locations that players are first introduced to. Three monsters of note in this area, the Great Jagress, Anjanoth, and Puke Puke. Beginning with one of the introductory monsters, the Great Jagras is a low-level docile monster with the appearance of a large lizard. While it will not attack a hunter unless provoked, it has been shown to swallow up other low-level monsters whole in the wild, greatly increasing its size. I am interested to see if this feeding mechanic will provide the monster with buffs in combat. The Anjanoth was first shown at PlayStation's E3 presentation. This monster is ferocious, and it looks like a dinosaur mixed with a vulture. Similar to the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park, the Anjanoth can also spread the frills on the back of its head when enraged. This monster also has fur on its upper torso, which may be a nod to the link between birds and other dinosaurs. Puke Puke is another great new monster that really shows the creativity and fun of designing new creatures. Not only is the Puke Puke a wyvern, but it's also a cross between a frog and a chameleon. It is a colorful and vibrant monster that can use its chameleon-like tongue for attacks. Puke Puke also carries a poison that changes depending on what it eats. Puke Puke is unique both visually and mechanically. I can only imagine how cool and colorful its armor and weapon sets will be when the game releases. Let's move on to another new location known as the Wildspire Waste. Here you will find the armored beast known as Baroth. He is a returning favorite from Monster Hunter 3 and 3 Ultimate. Baroth looks heavy, tough, and is pretty much a wrecking ball that players will need to observe carefully for a successful hunt. I love how he's portrayed this time around. Again, it goes back to the fact that this game is a full-fledged AAA title. Look at that forehead! This monster brings a whole new meaning to the word headbutt. I would imagine that if Baroth was a hunter, he would wheel a hammer and go to town. Coming up next is the Coral Highlands, and here you will find two brand new monsters. Palomu is a massive bat who can inflate himself. His design is both adorable and effective. When he inflates himself, he looks like a cute white puff cloud, but don't let that fool you. He inflates in order to attack players from above their heads with vicious tail swipes. Paloma will also breathe air against hunters as an attack as well. This new monster reminds me of Xamtrios, and the way that they both have some kind of inflation mechanic that hunters need to be aware of. Next up is the aerial wyvern known as Lajania. My favorite thing about Lajania is the color and beautiful design which looks like it's based on a butterfly. This white wyvern attacks primarily from the air and uses several ice-based attacks. Lajania is one of my most anticipated monsters in the game, and I can't wait to see the armor set it's based on. Aerial creatures seem to be prominent theme in Monster Hunter World. Since the game is now open world, it allows more space for both monsters and players. Playing on handheld devices would limit your field of view, but playing on consoles now creates new opportunities to explore new monster designs. And lastly, in the Rotten Vale resides a creature known as the Odogaran. Now this red menace looks like a big, fast, and ferocious threat. He reminds me of the Tigrex, in the way that Odegaran will be relentless. Now here comes conspiracy theory number one about this monster. Take a close look at this guy. He is big, red, and ripped. But his distinct red colorings looks like he would be the perfect boss for a Resident Evil game. Odegaran's design is insane, with claws on top of claws. Seriously, this monster has a row of claws on top of another row of claws on its front legs. 
Oda Garen is definitely one of my most anticipated monsters in Monster Hunter World. Now, let's move on to our list of monsters we want to see back in Monster Hunter World. First up is Zenogre, who has made appearances in the Monster Hunter series since Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Battling Zenogre is a very technical fight and requires a lot of attention to movement. His lightning fast attacks and literal lightning blasts create fast paced combat. Now, Glavinus and Mitsuzune may be recent entries to the Monster Hunter roster, but I would personally be glad if the developers added them to Monster Hunter World. Glavinus is a devilish looking Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it can breathe fire, sharpen its gigantic sword tail, and set that on fire as well. He would be a welcome face to see back in some fire themed part of the world. Mitsuzune is also a great monster in a more majestic kind of way. Almost like a samurai mixed with a sense of royalty. Not only is Mitsusune a beautiful looking monster, it can also give a good challenge to new players and show early on that Monster Hunter can create stylish creatures as well. And there we are! That was our list of monsters we would like to see back in the latest entry to the series. What monsters would you like to see return in some way or form? Would you like the original monster, or would you want something inspired by it? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to come back next week and check out my coverage of the Monster Hunter World beta that starts this weekend on December 9th. Gaming Instincts TV will be leaving you right here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more video game coverage. Peace out!